Good morning and welcome to our morning prayer today. I hope you're well. It's February. I honestly never thought January was going to end. It seemed like it was going on forever, <laughs> but we've actually entered uh, February. So as we take a moment's quiet, let's just uh, come into God's presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And so the night is past and the day lies open before us. So now let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I wonder what it is that, that you're missing the most of at the moment. Is it seeing family, grandchildren, going out for a meal, trips, holidays? Hanging out with friends? A hug? I don't think we're built to be inside in our own company. I know some enjoy the introverted life, but even most of the introverts that I know still enjoy being in the presence of others. And I know that I'm definitely missing the joy of being with other people. I wonder if this last year we've learnt the value of each other, of family, of friendship, of being in relationship and fellowship with each other. Our reading this morning is from Proverbs 27 and talks about having our friends and family close. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Do not forsake your friend, or a friend of your family. And do not go to your relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbour nearby than a relative far away. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. If anyone loudly blesses their neighbour early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I don't know how often you've delved into the book of Proverbs, but it's a book of practical wisdom rather than doctrinal theology. It touches on a multitude of human experiences that all of us are able to identify with. These verses refer to some of the blessings and pitfalls of personal relationships. And by reflecting on them, we grow in wisdom about what to expect from people. See, solidarity and fellowship with each other should be our basic commitment in the Christian faith. 
Friendship is among life's greatest delights, enriching each of us when it's a source of joy and pleasure. We need friends. Sometimes they're close and more available to us than family. And for this reason, it's good to remain true both to friends and to family. Be generous to neighbours, to practice goodwill, even when that might cost us. In our world becoming progressively less trusting and more suspicious, take the risk of, trust, of trusting others is often a countercultural act. So if people only behave in the way that we expect them to or want them to, if we limit what people are allowed to do, then we become distrustful of anything that's seemingly out of the ordinary. You only have to look around at the way people react. Maybe you're a member of a neighbourhood watch group. Or you're part of a club who, if someone new comes in, it's seen as a bit of a shock. So it's countercultural to be trusting of others. But perhaps in our Christian faith, we need to be full of trust and accepting of all those around us. Now that might mean that we'll get hurt. And that might mean that we might get stung and burnt a little bit. But if we're prepared to take that small risk, then actually our fellowship will grow with so many. Yet friends are not just there to make us feel good. Real friends will, held, will hold us accountable. They might speak words of truth out of love that we might not like to hear. They may challenge our views so that we have to rework them in a more satisfactory way. And they are all good things. They may not feel it at the time, but they are all good things when done in love and are to aid us to grow. And when that's the case, we need to be open enough and trusting enough to accept this when it comes. We also need to be brave enough sometimes to speak truth with a friend. And that can be only done in a close, trusting relationship that's been built up with one another. Now, of course, there'll be times when we get it wrong. I know I can often sometimes go with a mouth full of foot or the intended way is not being received as I thought it would be. It's important in those situations to respond well and recognise when we've got it wrong and apologise. But just as much it's important for the other party to accept that and then move on. See, that's why relationship building is so important in the first place. Perhaps we also need to be a little less quick to take offence at so many things. When we know each other, love each other in Christ, we're more open to allowing truth to be said and for the odd mishap to be put to one side. And I think that's why being part of a worshipping fellowship, being in home groups, being in others' company is key to a thriving and growing church community. These verses in Proverbs, above all else, are an encouragement not to live selfishly, or on our own, but to be considerate and in fellowship with each other and to promote harmony and concord to the best of our ability. Even to the point of not having your radio up loud for your neighbours. Perhaps you need to pray for your friends and your neighbours today. And I encourage you last week to stay in touch. So who are you going to call and catch up with today? Amen.
As we finish, I'm going to finish with the prayer of the day from the Church of England, and then you might wish to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and your mass messengers to every nation. Help us in all of our relationships to be truthful with each other, to be true friends. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hope you have a good day, whatever you're doing. But for now, the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always.